Yo, what up everybody? It's your boy Old Man Sim here back with some more content. Today we're gonna do a react video on why isn't gaming fun anymore. I don't really know this creator too much, but I know there's been a lot of videos going around lately about like why gaming isn't fun anymore, why games suck, why this and that. So I figured, hey, might as well watch this. So this is gonna be my first attempt at a react video. Um if y'all don't already know, I stream five days a week on Twitch. You can find the link below. Um, and at the end of the day, if you end up liking this content, leave a like, a subscribe, comment, helps out, get the videos out there and whatnot. But, uh, let's get into it. Let's see what this person has to say. Let's see if, uh, you agree or disagree. Listen guys, here's the thing. I'm old. I have gray hair. Let me know if you can hear it. One thing that's been in my life since my hair was short and full of color. And that's video games. I do have gray in my hair Recently, too. I know how that is. I realized that I spend it's a lot more gold. time consuming content about video games than I do actually playing video games. I agree with I that too. I do as well. Months at a time where I did not play a single minute of video games. And it most certainly is not because I'm a busy <laughs> and accomplished adult with a role. You know, that's true too. I've had a lot of times here recently to where um, I don't end up like playing games. I'll watch videos on the history of Final Fantasy 7 or this, that, or the other. Like, I probably consume more content about games and than I do actually watching them. Plus, like, I have a TV in my room, but I don't have cable, so I just watch YouTube. That's another thing, too. I watch histories of shit or whatever, but I end up consuming more content about games than I actually do watching games. Than playing games, I mean. Growing career and social life, because <laughs> quite the opposite. My life mostly revolves around watching YouTube videos, streams, and shows. But I actively miss Same. video games and spending countless hours immersing myself in creative worlds and game systems. And it seems like I'm the only one with this problem. All my He's not though. Like I really do think as well, like like I, 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 I miss being able to sit down in like Skyrim for like hours and hours and hours at a time, especially being a content creator now. Like I find it really difficult to play a game off stream if it does it has to be something i can get in get out quick like a off or something like that but uh all right bet i'll turn it up a little bit then um um but i agree with uh with what the guy's saying in here i turned it up some so y'all should be able to hear a little bit better now um if it's too loud let me know as well i'll uh, adjust it from there too um but I, I mean, I feel you. Like I miss getting into Skyrim and just playing all the way through it. I have been trying to get better in playing a game and beating it through stream, but then I have that urge. Like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have this urge to play it off stream, but I don't want to play off stream because I want those people to see it. So it is something that I've realized that happens more and more. Is Especially with creation, I get away from just going through a game. But I miss those days. Fallout 3, Skyrim, New Vegas, Oblivion. Oblivion came out on 360, man. I just played through that motherfucker. So I do feel what the zoo's saying in that. My friends still have the games that they're obsessed with and play all the time. I personally don't enjoy most of those games since uh, apparently I'm a boomer that hates games now. So what's the deal? Am I growing out of this hobby that I've loved for so long? Or perhaps I'm just jaded from the infestation of corporate greed and its insatiable hunger for infinite growth afflicted upon us at every corner, in every game, with cash shops and battle passes, so many battle passes, and coins, and the crystals you have to buy, and the crystals, you don't get the right amount of crystals, and it doesn't make sense for all the items in the shop because they have, you have a little left over because they want you to spend more money. Or maybe... That I'll agree with as well. Microtransactions are, they're not even microtransactions anymore. They like, they really do fuck with you wanting to playing the game. Like, I just like playing the game, maybe buying DLC and then going with it. But then, like, with like a Dead by Daylight, which they showed in that video or somewhere, you know, Lost Ark, which I tried to play, I couldn't get into. You have to buy this kind of coin and buy this, and you only get so many, and then you're five shorts, so you should buy the bigger packs, so you have more, and then. Now you're 20 short, you have 23, and like that shit ruins it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like that shit um, kind of uh, has ruined it in, in some sense. Games are just bad now. Or is it some other nuanced collection of reasons that I'm going to spend the rest of this video exploring and talking about? How's the volume sound? Is it too loud? Do I need to bring it down or just let me know? Yeah, no, games are definitely just bad now. It 
was the early 90s. One of my earliest, most vivid memories of video games was... Yo, F-Zero was the shit. F-Zero was... I wish they would make a new F-Zero game. That was one of my favorite games of all time. Super Nintendo was my second favorite console ever, which they were showing there. F-Zero, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, um, Super Tech Mobile, uh, Super Contra, nah, the fucking, uh, I mean, Super Metroid, um, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, my favorite game of all time, like, the console was goaded, bro. It was the Christmas that I got a Super Nintendo. I got this Mickey Mouse game called The Magical Quest, starring Mickey Mouse. I remember just laying down in my living I think room I had that one. I had one of them. Playing on my little CRT TV. It was like cracked. My tiny little underdeveloped brain just seemed Super pixels Mario World was another one. Command. I was hooked. And that was it. The floodgates were open. Throwing Foot Clan ninjas into the screen at yes. the time. Collecting all the letters and Donkey Kong Country. Stomping Koopas. In Super Mario World. Solving puzzles. Dude, another top five game. Uh, Super Mario World and Le Legend of Zelda Link to Pass. Two of the top five games of all time. Came out on Super Nintendo. Three of them, Chrono Trigger. Three of my favorite games of all time, all Super Nintendo. With all the cool items and the Link to the Past, that kick ass intro and Super Metroid. I was hyped and stressed Great out my game. little mind for that. Never beat it. This era was peak gaming and would forever solidify me as a Nintendo fanboy. But then, a few years later, no, the no. most fateful day of any kid growing up in the mid-90s. The Christmas where I got my... It was that sick-ass green one that was bundled with it. Don I had the original one, <clears throat> but I was really upset when I got mine for Christmas because our TV did not have the hookup for it. Because my parents had a big screen TV. I didn't have a TV in my bedroom at the time. And I had to wait till the day after Christmas to play it. Because no stores are open. It wasn't like now to where like stores open up at like six o'clock in the evening or whatever. You know what I mean? But I, but oh my gosh, Super Nintendo. I had the Gold Zelda, Golden Eye, Mario sixty four, um, uh, fucking Turok, um, the Star Wars Racer game, uh, just so many good games, bro. Time splitters. Um, just a great console, bro. Such a great console. I remember being in school and people talk about Tur Tarkov, uh, Tarkov. Tarkov on the brain. Turok. Or like I said, the Speed Racer game. Where you had the little extension pack you would sit in the Super Nintendo. The Rumble Pack. That was the first time we've had Rumble in our controllers. The Rumble Pack and shit. Dope, bro. Donkey Kong 64 and that little RAM pack. But now, games were 3D. Donkey Kong, Mario, Zelda, all had an entirely new dimension. Ocarina of Time. Wow, how could I forget that? Mentioned to explore Majora's Mask. so many gameplay options. But that wasn't all, because you could play with four players. Mario Kart, Mario Party, Smash Bros, the rise of party games. You could sit on the couch with your friends. I didn't play Mario Party until hands, GameCube. Accused them of cheating, ruined friendships. It was great. But party games weren't the only thing that benefited from the four controller slots. Haha, <laughs> Goldeneye. Multiplayer first person shooters. My friends and I spent countless hours on Goldeneye 64. We even used to get cardboard boxes and tape them up to the screen to section it off so that you couldn't screen look. We took that shit That's very stream. seriously. Now, by this time, first person shooters already existed on PC. But I had the crappiest Dell that was cheap and out of date. I had a horrible PC at the time. 90s. I could play. Well, Doom. I was still able to play bangers like Roller Coaster Tycoon, Age of Empires 2, StarCraft. I knew the. P oh, and The Sims. I never played uh, StarCraft, but The Sims, uh, The Sim City, not The Sims, Sim City. PC was eventually going to be where it's at for me. But for now, the next console era was upon us. GameCube, goaded. I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I, I'll, I'll be I really that. feel like there was two games in particular GameCube that underrated. defined this generation for me personally. The first game... Wavebird, greatest controller ever. Wavebird, greatest controller ever. Wireless controller, greatest controller ever. Wavebird. I'm just saying, Wavebird. But fucking GameCube, legit Wind Waker, Zelda, Smash Bros, Smash Bros Melee, I believe it was. Holy shit, we would put money on that. Mario Parties. Man, man, the GameCube was so good. Uh, Resident Evil 4, 
was Smash Bros. There were so many more characters than the first game, so many more stages. It controlled beautifully. It was a masterpiece. Goated game. One time my parents made us go play outside, and so we stuck the TV up against the window and threw the controllers out there, and so we were all just standing outside playing Smash Bros. through a window. And the second game was Time Splitters 2. Luckily, I played with my From dad. the same but developers of GoldenEye, Time Splitters would become my favorite shooter to this day. The game had an insane amount of game modes, tons of characters, a map editor that you make your own story missions. It had it all. One of my friends was a genius when it came to making maps. I and can every never time make we maps. got together, he had a couple new maps that had some interesting gimmick that completely changed the way we played the game. One of my favorite maps of his was one where it was just this square. It was like a grid of rooms with doors and we would run around with one shot, one kill baseball bats. It was terrifying. If you've never played Time Slitters, that was uh, such a good I'm game. sorry, you, you're really missing out. The era of couch gaming would not last forever though. And in fact, it was soon coming to a close. Monday, March 15th, what was 2004. That? I never played RuneScape. You all play RuneScape? I never did. I've never played it. This was the day that I created my first RuneScape account. It would be my first introduction into the world of MMOs, the genre that encapsulated everything that I loved about gaming. The adventure, the immersion, puzzle solving. I know people love the shit out of this game. Never played this, never played WoW. I played um, Fantasy Star Online was my introduction to MMOs, online MMOs on the original Xbox. I've been crafting and I could play and enjoy it with my friends and hundreds of people across the world. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was loving every minute of it. Later that year, a certain other MMO would release World of Warcraft. Never played Unfortunately, it. there was one issue. I still had dial-up internet. Dude, I had dial-up for the longest time. Years until I got out of dial-up hell. So in the meantime, the only way I could play World of Warcraft was either by playing at a friend's house or sneaking the installation out of the school computers in the library, which I absolutely did. They were not very well managed at the time. I wouldn't hit max level on World of Warcraft until the tail end of Burning Crusade just before Wrath. But by then, World of Warcraft was the game that I played. But that is actually how I played Half-Life. I didn't play Half-Life on a computer until some dude brought it to school and put it on the school uh, lab computers. And it would remain that way for several years until about halfway through my senior year of high school. That's when I got beta access to StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Never played My Starcraft. friends and I were so hyped for this game, we spent every day in school in our computer class just playing StarCraft II. I fell in love with competitive gaming and esports because of StarCraft II. It was the first game that I actually tried to play competitively and work my way up a ranked ladder. There was East. I would practice almost every day with friends, watch Day 9 and Husky videos, aspirations of going pro. I only ever made it to plat, but getting to plat felt incredible. I remember my friend and I used to wake up at like 5 in the morning to watch the GSL. And in 2011, as a broke college student in Orlando, Florida, I bought a ticket to MLG using a literal bag of coins. MLG. It was such an incredible experience. My friends and I got to meet all of our favorite players, Huck, in control. I used to always play, uh... What was the, the, the thing that you would play, like, um... What was it, through MLG? But it was like the battle? Um, game battles, game battles, and like Rainbow Six and stuff. I used to play, love playing on game battles. Me and my crew stacking up bodies, bro. Fucking legit. Troll. We also got to meet Day Nine, Husky, Artosis, and Tasteless. It would be my very really first, can't to this. and unfortunately, my very last live gaming event. I've never and been to a live gaming Starcraft event. Eventually, StarCraft Two would give way to League of Legends, which a few years later gave way to Smite, which would be the last competitive East. I never played League. I tried to play Smite, and I know uh, my friend uh, Death by Mr. Pink plays it. And a few other friends of mine that, in my old community, they play the fuck out of it, but I could never really get into it. Like, I couldn't get into, like, the lane games and stuff. I don't know. I just really couldn't. I tried. It looks cool. I downloaded League of Legends, but I, I just couldn't. I couldn't. Esport game that I played seriously. None of them really grabbed me in the same way that StarCraft 2 did, and I'm not sure any other competitive esport ever will. This was about the peak of gaming in my life. The best of it all came before, and I feel like I can pinpoint the exact year that the steep slope downward began. And that year was 2014. This was the year that StarCraft was all but dead, 
the year Warlords of Draenor came out, the first ever World of Warcraft expansion that I Never did not buy it. or play. This was the year Destiny released and was a massive disappointment. Destiny 1 was amazing. Now, when it first came out, I agree. There was a lack of content. But if you stuck with that game, bro, I put fucking thousands and thousands of hours in that game. Destiny 1 was, was amazing after they got to it. I didn't get into Destiny 2 when it first came out because the friends I played with were like, oh man, even though I loved you a lot to get uh, raids and stuff done, and I would carry my friends through it and like show them how to do it. They were like, oh man, Destiny 2 is going to suck. It's just the same thing. And I was like, all right, man, I'm not going to buy it. And then I was really disappointed I didn't buy it. This was the year that Smite introduced loot boxes. This Yikes. was the year that Wildstar released and failed. And every year on from this point, just seemed to be one big disappointment after another. It felt more and more common for games to release unfinished or broken or have some predatory monetization. I mean, Every that's year true. seemed worse than the last. But see, I think I think Overwatch gets a bad rap for that because I remember when I I didn't play Overwatch when I first came out, I played it. Um, I bought it because Kitty played it a lot and her and I played it some. And you didn't have to buy loot boxes in Overwatch. You could get everything you wanted in Overwatch for free by just playing the game. So I know they got a bad rep for that, but you can get anything you wanted in Overwatch by playing the damn game. They actually need to bring them back for Overwatch 2. Just make you earn them, not pay for them. Gaming seems different now. There is a lot of paywalls to games now. The gaming industry has grown incredibly fast since I first picked up a controller. In fact, in 2021, yes. the games industry raked in more cash than music and film combined. A good bit of this growth can be attributed to the rise of mobile gaming, which in 2021 made up 45% of the total revenue in the industry. 45% is course, mobile gaming? And of the stench of this heaping pile of cash would not go unnoticed by the insectoid swarm of sea. That does make sense, like uh, Candy Crush, Farmville. Was Farmville on your phone? I don't know, that was on Facebook. Stuff like Candy Crush and stuff where you had to buy more lives or or any of those games actually, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get it. Like, I, I a little bit and like the little fighting games, like the Raid Shadow Legends and shit like that. Like, I understand. I just, I never really got into them. These sweet executives and with their grubby little shit stained appendages and their dunkest touch, they've pushed hard to make console and PC gaming monetization more closely resemble that of a mobile game, attempting to normalize all the same That's underhanded true. tactics which apply psychological manipulation in various ways to pry as much money as they can out of its users in a predatory manner. Whether it's feeding off of players' addictions by implementing gambling adjacent mechanics, or their frustration by creating problems and selling back the solutions, or FOMO with limited time buy now expensive of skins. The online nature of the Fortnite live service model destroyed has primed games for these sort of exploitations. It's not completely without its pushback though, as we gamers have been successful in combating some of these changes, as is the case with loot boxes, as we've pretty much eradicated those from most PC and console games at this point. Though it definitely seems like a losing battle, as every year more ground gives way to the normal- Now, my only problem with loot boxes is, is that if, if they told you, if you knew what you're getting, not you get like a 2% chance because it does turn into gambling and I've done it myself. Oh, let me, I'll buy one more. I'll buy one more. I'll buy one more. And then, then all of a sudden you're $100 in the hole. Realization of such strategies in like a one step forward, 10 step back kind of way. For example, if we look back, it wasn't that long ago when DLC was considered I, outrageous. I bought that armor. It was seen as devs taking content out of the original game and holding it back to sell later. And that's but true. as always, the ground gave way and the conversation shifted to whether or not it was day one DLC or how much effort they put into it. But I will say the one beauty that we do have now is, is that if we were shipped a trash game or a game that was broken back in 64, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, we were stuck with it. Now they can put out DLC to give you more stuff with it. They can update it. They can make it live. Like, there's a lot of good things with, with being able to edit the game. Because if you think about how many games, like the market crash of a video game market crash, like with ET and all that shit, where they had to all of the more games that are buried in Arizona or whatever, like people would just put out shit games all the time just to get your money. It's the same thing happens now. I think it's just more known now and there's more hype machine behind it now you know what i mean but at least now they have the opportunity to fix it unless your anthem which they started to fix it but never did
into the DLC, if the content was worth it. Fast forward to today, where similar conversations are being which I heard uh, yesterday, Marvel Avengers got anthemed, got axed. It was trending on Twitter. Glad I never got into it. Had about the pay to win debate, where at first any pay to win is completely unacceptable, to now being able to find conversations about how a certain game is not that pay to win. I'm not into pay to win. Complaining about monetization in games is nothing new or original. In fact, it's an oversaturated market. And at this pay to look good? Okay. Pay to win? Fuck that. At this point, just feels like beating a dead horse. It seems you'll never get enough people to care about this topic, and until that happens, nothing will change. Instead, I'd like to talk about a bit of a hot take here, that in the past 10 years, gaming really hasn't changed much at all. The gaming industry feels pretty stagnant. If I compare games as they are now to how I thought they would be by now as a kid... The one thing I'll say is I'll agree with that, because there's like remake after remake. How many Skyrims have there been? How many remakes of Skyrim, remasters of Skyrim has there been? There's been, feels like a fucking hundred. Or was it The Last of Us? Or they, they put it out and then they remade it. And then they remade it. Like, a lot of it's rehashing. But I mean, the same thing happens with all mediums. You can only do, yes, there is creativity. Yes, there's newer things. Yes, there's new ways to do things and, and new ideas. And, you know, even there's like games like... Uh, uh, RimWorld that uses like an old looking concept to make a new style game. Not that it's a, a reinventing the wheel, but but you see it in Hollywood all the time. You see it with TV shows all the time. What is that, the new TV show, the, that 90s show? Or whatever, going after that 70s show, you know what I mean? Like, this happens in media, period. They recycle shit all the time. But, remaking a game like five years after it's already been out there, remaking Skyrim 75,000 fucking times, you don't have to. Buy it on your PC, mod it out. That's it. One time's good enough. The pic it's not like, oh, let's remake Final Fantasy VII that was with really bad polygons. No, that makes sense. But remaking The Last of Us doesn't make sense. Which is very disappointing. As a kid who just discovered MMOs like RuneScape and World of Warcraft, I was blown away by the idea of what MMOs could be in the future. I would hop off World of Warcraft and go play Dungeons and Dragons and think, man, one day World of Warcraft is going to have the same level of choice and consequence that- I would love to do a Dungeons and Dragons, like a Zoom Dungeons and Dragons on Twitch. I've seen a few people do it. I would love to do that. All I would want to be would be the Dungeon Master. And I would dress up and like fucking role play the shit out of that. I would love to do that. Dungeons and Dragons on stream. That I can have with my imagination playing D and D. Now, obviously, that hasn't happened yet. And as a kid, I didn't know anything about game development. But I've heard a similar observation from Rasboon in his video series "Gaming for a Non Gamer," which is a great series, and I recommend you check it out. Hmm. Where he discusses his wife's disappointment discovering video games for the first time. I'm about to watch those. Her expectations for what she thought she could do in each game were always different than the reality. And I think as she realized that games were more simple than she had first assumed, some of the intrigue about them faded. There's a massive lack of innovation and risk-taking in the AAA space. As we see games like Skyrim being released a billion times, The Last of Us is getting its third version of the game, Call of Duty ran out of ideas and decided to just loop back around and start re-releasing their games in order again, hoping no- I do agree that the AAA games do that, but there's so many good independent games out there. Blasphemous, Blasphemous 2, uh, Bomadora, um, uh, Rimworld, uh, just there's there's a lot of really good non AAA games out there. Just people need to get over that they're indie. Everybody's available to have the same assets now. Assets are widely available online. People use the Phasma assets and other assets for the game. All these assets are indie games shouldn't have that stigma on them that they once did. Nobody would notice, but they somehow made all the games worse, so everyone noticed. Which brings me to my next point, where. Not only are companies not really interested in innovating at all, but they seem to be actively taking steps backwards in innovation. If you look at something like the original Fallout's super in-depth dialogue system versus Fallout 4's dialogue system, it's a huge step back. And that's a tame example. It gets so much worse. Blizzard, for example, figured out that they can retroactively- No, I understand that, but, but Fallout 4 and Fallout, all those were like, I'm, I'm sorry, those are still great games. Fallout 4 did a little bit too much leaning into the building and stuff. I didn't get into that as much. But, I mean, those are still great games. I think that's a bad example. ...ruin a 20-year-old game with Warcraft 3 Reforged. 
Well, I guess that was pretty innovative. The only real innovations coming out of this industry are coming from indie developers and modders. Exactly. The latter of which is responsible for the two biggest genres in the past decade. And that's without even the expectation of getting paid. Isn't that weird? Kind of goes against the... Well, that's true. Modders is great. And that's the thing. If you can mod a game, that's great. There's a reason why Battle Royales. Battle Royales are oversaturated. happen too much. But PUBG. PUBG. I remember I wanted to play that game so bad because for the longest time I wanted the Hunger Games, but a video game. Me and my friends would always talk about this shit. PUBG, for example, was a mod of DayZ or Armor or one of those. I don't remember which, but I never played DayZ or Armor, so sorry if y'all can yell at me in the comments. But Conventional capitalist thinking, huh? Looking at the trajectory of the industry, it's really hard to not just be depressed about it all and wonder if the industry can ever course correct. Of course it can. Yes. It's weird to I don't know where he's going to go with this, but but yes, the world has changed because of things like TikTok, shorts, reels, um, phones, Twitter. Uh, we have milliseconds of um, attention spans. Reminds me of a clip from a basketball when, when the dude first goes to buy the team or says he wants to make a new team basketball, making a sport out of it. It was like people's, um, you know, are judged in milliseconds, you know what I'm saying? Like, and all those quick form contents have kind of destroyed our thinking. So I think it's really hard to hold our attention now. And trust me, that's why I beat, not beat as many games as I used to beat, you know what I mean? And that's why in my bio, I try to have something I added was games that I beat or the one stream. So I have that incentive to go and beat them so I can fix my attention span. But trust me, I watch shorts all the time. I'm, I'm, I, I victim per se of that, but I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to say victim because we're not victim. We, we do it ourselves, but it's nice to watch like, oh, I've got an, I got four or five minutes to do something. We watch a few shorts. You know what I mean? I, I understand, but it's also very detrimental. I think that things like YouTube, Reddit, and all these other social media sites haven't really been around that long. And yet it's sometimes hard to remember what it was like before they existed. These sites have made data mining, crowdsourced information, and video guides all accessible to everyone at all times. In some cases, the internet will have every bit of information about every mechanic and secret in a given game before they even release. The and all of these things have out. drastically changed how we play video games. Let's take a look at a game like World of Warcraft. If I had to describe how I feel playing Retail WoW in one word, it would be emptiness. Not because of a lack of content necessarily, so much as the game just kind of feels soulless. Where before, the game was about adventure and discovery, it is instead now a game about optimization. It's essentially a solved game where add-ons and logs have optimized gameplay to a T with little room for experimentation or creativity. Which is fine. I mean, no one likes to play suboptimally. I'm not trying to... I can understand that, and I can agree with that, but that's also the reason why I like games like um, The Division, The Vision 2. I love theory crafting finding a way to do what i want to do in a game without like and i mean i know there's always a way to min max and do it and my friends always look them up or whatever but but that does hurt but it also gives you direction like you want to do this in a game this is how you're going to be able to do it this is what you need to achieve for which i understand it makes it more of a list or a routine i gotta get this daily done this daily done get this done do this you know so i understand but it also gives you direction sometimes to vilify optimization as it can be quite fun for some people. Take speedrunning for example. Speedrunning is such an interesting hobby to me. It's something I've always wanted to get into but I've always felt a little intimidated by. The stuff that people are able to achieve with speedrunning is truly mind-blowing. Some of which yeah, is I'm only really possible because of the interconnected nature of modern gaming. Or sharing glitches and exploits is part of the fun of collectively iterating on runs to shave off more and more time. But then if you look at something like RuneScape, one of the most solved games that has become literally all about the optimization, you'll find a community who has made it a tradition of People coming up with off-the-wall challenges and restrictions inflicted upon their accounts, also known as Snowflake accounts, so that they are forced to forge their own path. There's no guide to follow on how to clear one of the hardest raids in old school RuneScape if you're not allowed to leave the Swamp Zone. But one man, after three years of theory crafting, grinding, and 33 very hard YouTube crafting. videos, was able to accomplish that goal, with hundreds and thousands of people watching and loving it. So clearly, the problem for World of Warcraft isn't just optimization itself. 
It's that optimization isn't just confined to the few who enjoy it, but instead sort of forced onto everyone else. With all these tools available to everyone and it's things not like Raider IO assigning public completion. It's only it's only forced on everybody else when it's like a PvP, you gotta keep it with the Joneses type thing. If it's like you're trying to do your own thing, then okay. Now I understand people are like, oh, you need to have Gallahorn for the raid, or you need to have this for a raid or whatever in Destiny or 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 the division or you know, even probably like WoW and them. I don't play WoW, but um, I understand that. But just this is not me. Like, uh, it, it it fucks with um, with PvP style games. Yeah, I get it. But if you're trying to do your own thing, single player, not trying to pe not trying to keep with the Joneses, I think that uh, uh, it's not as big of a deal. Scores. Everyone is expected to be fully optimized or not play the game. Because again, no one likes to play suboptimally. Ignorance truly is bliss. It's my opinion that this is the real reason why World of Warcraft has been struggling. Like Asmongold has said, Blizzard has ignored the casual audience and failed to produce fun and compelling activities that aren't just about the optimization. Instead, they just continue to double down on the raids and dungeons catering to this nature of gameplay. Now, as of this recording, hmm. Dragonflight has not released yet, so maybe that will be the expansion that fixes this issue. But it's not just retail. A lot of players were excited about Classic I've, and I've logged never in and expected to it. recapture like, that nostalgic sense of adventure. But things are too different now. The way we play games is too different now. The game didn't seem nearly as hard as they remembered. The world not as vast. But I think it's gone to the fact that every facet of the game has been solved already, and that the joy of the original true. release I mean, I can understand lied that. People in the discovery everything in, in the journey. Warcraft. Now, this mm -hmm. is not everyone's opinion. There's still plenty of people that very much enjoyed Classic. This is mostly just anecdotal I'm sentiment from it, so me and my know. friends. But I do think that this might be why so many people get excited whenever a new MMO is released. It's a chance to discover things for the first new time, world. to not new be world beholden fun, to the methods and builds that someone content. else already figured out and everyone is expected to use. A chance for you to be the one that discovers those methods. New world was but a lot of fun. For better or for worse, content. this is just the way the world is now. Maybe someday a game will come out that is immune to this phenomenon. A game that can't be solved, where the discovery never goes away. I don't think that'll ever possible. happen. But who knows? Maybe someday. I don't think it'll ever be to where games can't be solved. We all change, we grow up. Of course you change. I don't feel like a different person. I feel like I always have been and always will be me. But I've changed my mind and opinions on a lot of things in the past 10 years. Growing up and dealing with adult responsibilities can be really stressful. You're faced with a lot of change Being an adult and really does. And it can be really easy to succumb like to worry and regret. Moving right now. But worry and regret are just a waste of time. Time that could be better spent having fun. You know, people say video games are a waste of time, but personally, I think that having fun and enjoying your life is the best way to spend your time. But they're not. What they're do you do fun. if you no longer- They're not though, they're fun, they're a good way to keep your mind going and active, it's something that keeps you going, like, I don't, I don't, I don't find it to be true. ...longer enjoy your favorite hobby. With this fog hanging over my head, I began reminiscing on how I used to enjoy games. I used to spend countless hours grinding the ladder in StarCraft 2, working on refining builds, seeing small improvements over time. I can't believe I never played StarCraft. Making quantifiable progress in the skill feels so good. Ah, the dopamine. But today, if you asked me to play just about any competitive game, I could not be fucking bothered. I haven't played League of Legends in like nine years, but I booted it. But I feel you, I don't, I don't like playing competitive games that much either anymore. Like, I mean, I'll play games with PvP, but not like... Not like League of Legends style, like I'll play Tarkov, that's competitive, but it's like, I don't know, it's different. Sea of Thieves, it's competitive-ish, but it's different. It's more, you know, I don't know. But I can understand that sentiment. I it up a couple of months ago. My friends were telling me about all the new champions and the new metas and the new builds, and I just wanted to go take a nap. Is it because my attention span is shot? Is the lack of elasticity in my rotting brain protesting against... That's the reason why I haven't gotten back into Destiny 2, because I don't want the grind and get everything back and then figure out what the meta is. Oh, it's shotguns for the Crucible, it's this for the Crucible, it's that, and you have to have this and this, and then you get the... Mm, mm, nah, I'm good. It's me trying to shove even more useless shit into it. Maybe both. I used to have the drive to spend hours learning everything I could about a new game. 
There were times where all I could think about was whatever game I was I do currently a certain playing, game. thinking like about what off. I wanted to accomplish next, how I was going to do it, and I wouldn't stop until I finished. Nowadays, I'd be lucky to stick with the game for more than a couple weeks before I'm over it, regardless of if I actually finish. Once again, that's why I've been, I, I, I agree with that sentiment and I have been that way. I want to get, actually get back to Cyberpunk because when I first got it on PC, it, it was uh, buggy as fuck and I couldn't get above like, even though the beast has to be like 20 frames in certain spots. Um, but I get that. That's like I said before, that's why in my bio, I have the games I've beaten to try to motivate me to actually finish a game. And I, I try to finish the game before I go into the next one. I actually learned that from, um, from Kitty, seeing her do that with a lot of her uh, single player playthroughs. She would play it until she beat it, and I'm like, you know what, I need to get back and do some more stuff like that instead of just playing a game for a week or two and then put it down. Because I'm not doing my self-service or the game service, because there's a lot of good games out there that I, I want to see how it ends and not just watch it. Finished it or not. So then, are there any games that I do enjoy? After so many disappointing letdowns and trying to enjoy games that just start to annoy me after two weeks, this question you know legitimately again. crossed my mind. And at the peak of my jadedness, one game proved to me that I did still indeed have Valheim. the capacity to fall in love with the game. And that game was Valheim. Such a game a that game. isn't even finished yet, but a game that's so... I'm actually thinking about getting back into it. I know my boy Cal Rizzi, he has a Valheim server and he invited it to me the other day. Yesterday? Day before yesterday? Two days ago? And um, I enjoyed it when I first got it and uh, ran out of content too soon. But then again, it's also because the people I played with at the time in the game that played the game would rush through everything. And I, I want to I wanna slow play it. I don't want to rush through everything and blow it out in two seconds. Perfectly created a sense of adventure Great and discovery game. that it reminded me why I love gaming to begin with. So it seems there may still be remnants of a gamer deep underneath all the jadedness. I've proven to myself that I definitely haven't outgrown the hobby. Maybe I've just been playing the wrong games. And sure, the world That's is different. That's a very big and chance. the way we play games is different. But they're still fun to be had. And despite the industry's best efforts to cannibalize itself, there will always be passionate indie developers and modders to pick up the slack and make good games and experiences. That's very and true. And maybe that's enough. Well, it kind of has to be enough. But I'm determined to rekindle my love of gaming. And that will be my New Year's resolution. I will begin my search to find the fun. Yo, that was a really good video. I enjoyed that a lot. I could understand a lot of sentiments the dude had in there. Um, what I will do is I will link this in the bio um, below if uh, in the YouTube if y'all want to go and uh, watch this. I, like I said, I haven't watched anything from this guy, the pie face, um, but I will hit the subscribe button right now. I recommend all y'all go watch this video. I'm going to be interested in watching more of his and subscribe, so he will be on my list of people that I end up watching. Um, I really enjoyed that, though. Like I could understand a lot of he was saying. Not really the War of Warcraft and Starcraft and, um, what was the other game, uh, 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 uh RuneScape. I've never really played those, but, but most definitely, um, so yeah. So, uh, thank you guys here. If you want to see more React content, once again, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Um, and yeah, you can always come visit me over on the Twitch, twitch.tv oldmansim, which will be linked somewhere on here. And, uh, so I hope to see you next time. Your boy Old Man Sim out. Peace. Oh, he just fucking made me do a fuck. That's how I dance in real life, bro. Just like that.